infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. Now, Chagas disease is a potentially life-threatening parasitic disease that affects up to 300,000 people here in the U.S. and millions more in South America. The current treatment regimen is oral benzidazole in smaller, twice-daily doses over two months. Now, my guest today and his colleagues say high weekly doses of the drug over 30 weeks resulted in better clearance of the parasite. Now, this research is outlined in a recent study published in the journal Science Translational Medicine. So joining me today is Regents Professor in the University of Georgia's Department of Cellular Biology, Rick Tarleton, Ph.D. Dr. Tarleton, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Well, let's go ahead and start out for listeners that may not be familiar um, a description of what is Chagas disease and the parasitic cause, Trypanosoma cruzi. Okay, so uh, Chagas disease is, as you mentioned, caused by the parasite Trypanosoma cruzi. It's a protozoan parasite that's uh, transmitted to humans and to many other animals by uh, triatamine bugs, sometimes called kissing bugs or assassin bugs. Um, as you mentioned, a large number of people, 10 million or more, possibly infected in Central and South America. It's um, a disease of poverty and poverty promoting. Um, these insects infest houses, low-income houses primarily, and transmission occurs in those uh, those those houses. It's a uh, disease of that's a slow killer. Um, People who contract the infection generally don't uh, have severe acute symptoms, but do not clear the infection for for their lifetime. And so they have a slow disease-forming process that primarily affects the heart, resulting in uh, heart failure, uh, but also can affect other organs, including uh, the gut. Now, benzidazole is the FDA-approved drug for Chagas here in the U.S. Uh, can you talk about the activity of this drug? Uh, what are the side effects? Right. So uh, benzidazole is, is one of the approved drugs for Chagas disease. The other is um, nifertamox. They have similar activities. They're both prodrugs that are activated by a nitroreductase that the parasite uh, has. And that activation of the drug uh, essentially creates a, a radical that binds to many different uh, proteins and nucleic acids and other components in the parasite. So it doesn't have a specific target. It hits many, many different functions in the parasite once this uh, conversion from a prodrug to a, to a real uh, activated drug happens within the parasite. And how about side effects? Yeah, side effects are uh, not um, not rare. Uh, in in humans, probably uh, 20% or so of people cannot complete a full course of treatment. The um, side effects are not are, are generally not terribly severe, but they uh, include dermatitis is the most uh, common one. There can also be neurological symptoms that are uh, side effects of taking the drug. But um, uh, the, the main one is a cumulative, uh, thought to be a cumulative dosing effect that occurs uh, maybe in the second, third, fourth week of treatment and uh, does cause a cessation of treatment in a, in a reasonably high number of individuals. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a second drug that's effective against this parasite. Can you talk about that briefly? Yeah, nifertamox is uh, another drug. They've, the, both of these drugs have been uh, in use for 40, 50 years. Uh, I believe nifertamox was also recently uh, FDA or preliminarily FDA approved for use in the U.S. Um, 
again, it has similar uh, activities and, and similar uh, functions as benzonidazole that structurally they're, they're slightly different, but they're activated by the same enzyme and have uh, uh, very similar efficacy and, and side effects. So are, are these drugs like readily available at hospitals or do they have to come from a central depot out of Atlanta or how does that work? Um, since FDA approval, um, uh, benzidazole is now available by prescription in, in the U.S. Uh, it, it used to be prior to that approval, it could be uh, obtained uh, through the CDC mm -hmm. um, on an individual basis, but it now uh, can be prescribed. It, it is only officially approved for use um, in, uh, I believe it's under 18 years of age. Uh, it's not officially approved for use in adults in the U.S., although it can be uh, used off-label for that. Sure. Well, as I mentioned in the intro, uh, the current regimen is smaller, twice daily doses over two months. However, you and your colleagues show in the study that giving as little as two and a half times the typical daily dose uh, once per week for 30 weeks completely cleared the infection, whereas given the standard daily dose once a week for a longer period did not. Uh, Dr. Tarleton, can you please talk about your research and the findings? Uh, certainly, yes. It's um, it's a little um, uh, counterintuitive the way you explain it. Basically, giving the drug uh, less frequently makes it work better. Um, but the way this drug works is uh, if the parasites, uh, uh, Panasoma cruzi, the, the uh, parasite that causes this disease, um, if those are actively dividing parasites, if they are uh, functionally metabolically active, this drug kills them very effectively. So you can uh, give a single dose of drug and kill uh, well over 90% of the parasites in an infected animal with a single dose, even a, even a low dose. Um, the problem with treating this uh, infection is that not all of the parasites at any time during the infection process are active metabolically. Some of them are dormant, and that's the finding that uh, we arrived at a couple of years ago and what, that, what stimulated the current research is the knowledge that you can give this drug repeatedly day after day, but if the parasites themselves are not metabolically active, the drug will have no effect on them. Mm -hmm. And so what our uh, regimen uh, that we designed uh, in this particular study sought to do was to give a, a higher dose of drug that was more effective, but only give it uh, weekly. And in this case, the, the idea was to kill as many parasites as were active at a time, and then to provide a period of time for the parasites that were dormant to come out of dormancy, give another dose of drug to kill those dormant parasites, and then give that regimen over a long enough period of time so that all dormant parasites eventually became susceptible to the drug. And one of the fascinating things about the study was how you assess the success of the treatment. Um, what did you do? and uh, how did you effectively assess this success? Right, so there's a, there's a couple of ways we did it in this study. Um, and the way we have classically done it and, and the way many others do it, um, what, one of the problems with Chagas disease um, in general and in treating the way uh, uh, these drugs work is that, as I said, many uh, the, a single dose of drug can kill 90% or more of the parasites, but the remaining parasites that are there are um, they're low in number and they're difficult to detect, and uh, so it's not so easy to uh, take blood from an animal or even a, a biopsy of tissue and uh, determine whether the animal is infected or not, or still infected or, or, or cured. One of the things that we did in this study was to adapt a new technology, a relatively new technology that used uh, clearing of tissues and then light sheet microscopy that allowed us to image whole organs from the animal, in this case heart and skeletal muscle and gut, 
organs that are normally the um, place where we find parasites and to be able to see as few as one or two parasites in the entire heart uh, using uh, light sheet microscopy. Very interesting. Um, one of the things that I read that you stated, um, you mentioned that the two drugs so far in this interview, but you acknowledge that new drugs are necessary for the treatment of Chagas. Can you elaborate on that? Well, I mean, it, we, we show that we can use the currently available drugs uh, to cure this infection. But as as we've discussed already, uh, these drugs are not without side effects. Mm -hmm. And uh, the studies that we uh, ha have published are done in, in mice. This is a natural host for the parasite. One of the aspects about T. cruzi that is somewhat unique is that uh, many different mammals are affected by this uh, infection and, and develop disease. So the mouse is a very good model for human disease, but it's not human. And um, so we can't uh, at this point make the, the claim that this sort of treatment will be uh, useful in humans because we don't know what the increased dosing in terms of toxicity might uh, might present as a problem in humans. Right. Um, so that alone tells us that, um, you know, these, these, this regimen has promise, but um, we, we know this drug, these drugs already have side effects. And so um, there's um, plenty of room for the development of better drugs, and, and including ones which attack the, the central problem that we're dealing with here, that is these dormant parasites. And so one of the things that we're very interested in doing is uh, seeking out new drugs that uh, directly kill dormant parasites rather than waiting for these parasites to come out of dormancy to make them susceptible to these, uh, these current drugs. Um, any final thoughts on the research or shagas or anything related? Um, well, just I think one of the take-home messages from, from this study is that um, by understanding the biology of an infection and a disease, and in this case understanding the existence of phenomenon like dormancy, that parasites exist that are not going to be susceptible to drug all at the same time, uh, allows us to design uh, treatment regimens and, and also to start to look for drugs that can more effectively treat these uh, infections. So, so really understanding the basic biology of the parasite and the infection it causes is uh, a real um, a positive in, in ability to uh, design and discover new drugs that have the, the right sorts of activities. Very good. And the study is entitled, A Modified Drug Regimen Clears Active and Dormant Trypanosomes in mouse models of Chagas disease. And I'll link to it in the show notes if you want to take a look at it while you're listening to the podcast. And I want to thank you, Dr. Rick Tarleton, for sharing your time and your expertise, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you.